Hey folks, my name is Scott Weingart and I'm going to walk you through our protected intubation video. Now when we were dealing with the first surge of COVID, we realized that our standard techniques didn't work for a number of reasons. Uh, we wanted a different level of protection, we wanted to minimize the number of people in the room, and we wanted to make the safety of the intubator have a primacy in our entire airway technique. So. The first thing we did is we came up with a way that only two people would have to enter the room. There would be the intubator and then there would be an assistant and that assistant could be another doc or it could be a nurse. And in either case, that assistant would stay six feet away from the patient and just be an observer. So only one person was really in that true danger zone right around the patient's mouth during the intubation and that person would be heavily protected. The other thing we realized is you get what one of my residents called papper brain, meaning uh, it's really difficult to have the same cognitive levels in a room with uh, a, a hood over your head or multiple layers of masks. And so what we decided was we were going to make things as easy as possible, that all the person intubating would have to do is follow orders from the assistant and they'd be reading off the checklist. So essentially you'd be a trained monkey. And the checklist would be so granular that you would not have to make the decision of what to do next. All you'd have to do is have a passing familiarity with the steps and then follow orders. So we're going to take you through our protected intubation. And we'll start off just showing you the contents of the protected intubation bag. Because the way we set it up is the only things you'd need to do an intubation is the protected intubation bag, a CPAP mask that's appropriately sized for the patient, uh, the orange intubation boxes we have in every room in our department, and the meds. Everything else would be in this bag, and we'll show you how to get it set up and ready to go. All right, so you have your BVM, your end title line, peep valve, end title adapter. You have the masks for the BVM. We have a multi-purpose adapter. You'll see the purpose of that shortly. The CPAP mask a viral filter, a heat moisture exchanger, an O2 line, a inline suction, a tube securing device, a bougie, and a mask and hood. You'll see how all this comes together in a moment. Prepare intubation supplies. Remove the BVM from the packaging, Expand the BVM. Check. Place the two BVM masks in the large plastic bag. Check. Attach the PEEP valve to the BVM. Check. Set PEEP valve to 10. Check. Attach end tidal CO2 adapter to BVM. Check. Attach multi-purpose adapter to end tidal CO2. Check. Attach extra O2 tubing to the multi-purpose adapter. Check. Place the BVM setup into the plastic bag. Check. Place the viral filter on the blue stem of the non-invasive positive pressure mask. Check. Give the face shield to me. Open the inline suctioning, attach corrugated tubing, remove the green spike, and make sure that the sheath is fully retracted. Check. Attach the HME to the other end of the corrugated tubing. Check. Place the entire inline suction into the big plastic bag. Check. Remove ET tube securing device from packaging. Check. Place in the large plastic bag. All right, let's set up the laryngoscope. Open the video screen and turn on. Place Check. the blade on the device. and place the ringoscope back in the big plastic bag.
So there's a lot of, to set up in that bag. During the surge, we always had one of these all assembled and then put back in the bag with everything except the laryngoscope ready to go. So you didn't have to do this right before an intubation. You just grab the pre-prep bag and actually go in. If you had multiple intubations, you'd have to prep this on the fly. It takes a long time to record for the video. Uh, once you get some familiarity, you could do it very, very quickly. Um, it takes less than a minute to assemble all the items once you know it. And then the checklist just becomes confirmation rather than having to wait for them to say it in order to assemble the individual pieces. The next step is for people to get into PPE. For us, the actual intubator wore a disposable hood with a papper underneath, a uh, continuous filtered air blowing device that kept the hood inflated with clean air. In addition, underneath they wore eye protection and an N95 mask. So we had two layers of protection for the intubator and even if the patient coughed into their face, they would be incredibly well protected. This is probably overkill. Many places simply used N95 surgical mask and full face protection, and that's probably okay. But the confidence I got intubating with full facial protection with a big hood made me feel super safe. So for that reason alone, I prefer to have the hoods. Uh, you're going to go with your institutional policies for what to use and how to put it on. So we're not going to show our donning and doffing videos because you should use whatever your institution has decided upon. So now you're actually fully in PPE, both the uh, assistant who has the standard N95 and full face shield and the intubator in our PAPR hood. And now we're going to enter the room. All right, attach the non-invasive mask to the patient with the viral filter and the BVM. Attach the supplemental oxygen from the BBM, 20 liters flush rate at the wall. Attach the supplemental oxygen to the other oxygen supply at 6 liters. Put the procedure table to the patient's right. Open the airway box. Take out an 80 ET tube. Attach the syringe and test the cuff. and place that on the table. Take out your scalpel and your eye gel. All right, close the box and remove it from the table. And then add two. Remove the C-Mac. 
place it on the table. Make sure that it's on. Open your bougie and place it on the table. Place the inline suction set up on the table. Place the BBM masks on the table. All right, set up your ET tube securement device by removing the three stickers and fixing the straps. Place that on the table. Check the wall suction set up. Attach the CO2 monitor to the tubing to the monitor. Yeah. Alright, position the patient. And let's test the vascular access. So there's so much going on there. Uh, the main thing to understand is we wanted to create a technique that would allow the patient to be, first of all, pre-oxygenated safely, which was why we have a non-invasive mask with a viral filter. And then a BVM with a PEEP valve with a continuous flow of oxygen in, in is essentially a CPAP device. So we were now pre-oxygenating the patient with CPAP because the continuous flow uh, augments the patient's uh, inspiratory efforts and then the PEEP valve with every exhalation, uh, they're breathing up against PEEP. Now, what you'll we'll see during the actual intubation itself is once we push the meds, we don't bag the patient, but we want them to maintain their oxygenation so that auxiliary source of oxygen flowing into the BVM, even in an apneic patient, will maintain CPAP. Without that secondary flow, uh, at, we had kept at six liters, what would happen is the patient would not get continuous CPAP. They wouldn't get high flow CPAP and they might desaturate. And then you'd have to bag them, putting you at risk. Uh, this device, an apneic CPAP device, which is what essentially we've created, allows the patient to maintain their oxygenation level without having to give a single breath during the apneic period. And uh, so that's why you see this more complicated BVM setup. If you want to hear more about that, you could go to the MCRIT site. Okay, so now they're actually ready to intubate. All right, here are your meds, doctor. All right, push the rocaronia, followed immediately by the ketamine. All right, perform a thumb forward grip and pull the jaw into the mask. And we're going to wait 60 seconds. Got my eye on the clock. I'm watching the end title and the oxygenation and the blood pressure. All right, ensure the patient is paralyzed. Unplug the multi-purpose adapter from the end title CO2. Remove the mask. and proceed with bougie-assisted ventilation, intubation. Okay, remove your bougie with a gloved hand, cupping the top of the tube. Inflate the cuff and remove syringe. Note the depth of the tube. 
attach the suction and HME tightly. Attach the viral filter with the BVM. Ventilate the patient. You have end tidal CO2. Alright, let's get respiratory in with the ventilator. So then respiratory comes in and sets up the ventilator in a protected fashion. And then you doff uh, under institutional protocol. Now we want to give you a close-up of setup of that BVM. So here you go. So you have a standard BVM, attach a PEEP valve, and we set it to 10 initially. You could set it higher if the patient's not oxygenating enough. We put on an end tidal CO2 adapter. And then to that, we attach a multi-purpose adapter that allows oxygen tubing to be attached that's going to give six liters continuously to the patient, even when they're apneic. And then on our non-invasive mask, a viral filter preventing uh, any exhalations from it being into the room. And then you attach that to the BVM. Now, whether the patient's breathing spontaneously or whether they're apneic, they're going to get CPAP. And you can bag through this as well. So that concludes the protected intubation video. Uh, if you go to mcrit.org slash COVID airway, you'll find a ton more information. Thank you to everyone who helped make this possible.